But moving on, we are going to be talking about the Joel Embiid max contract that the 76ers dished out. And Dave, it was a big one for, yeah boy, five years, 146 million but let's run through a lot of clauses because again 31 games he's played in his career was drafted back in 2014 finally got to play this year but then again only played 31 games extension assumes 101 million cap for the 2018 2019 uh, uh, season if he misses 25 plus games or plays fewer than 1650 minutes due to injuries either to his back or his foot Philly has the rights to waive and reduce his guaranteed amount of money. Uh, he's guaranteed uh, 84.2 million if waived after 2018-2019, 98.2 if waived after 2019-2020, 113 million after 2021, 20, and then 129.4 million if uh, waived after 21-22. There's also a couple more, but it's not a big deal. Also, if he you know reaches MVP or first team All All NBA, he gets like a 30% max. Yep, but. All in all, there are some clauses if he does get hurt. So it's not awful. You know, obviously 31 games and a max contract. Yeah, being for told that max guy, contract, right, right with that number is a tad scary. Like, there's opt-outs. Yeah. There, there's ways out. If he misses 25 games or he doesn't play 1,650 minutes, he's he's pretty much screwed out of his money. If, if Philly feels like they, they should yeah. waive him. Is he worth the contract though? Because again, we only saw him for 31 games. Uh, yeah. We, we saw him for 31 games, but in those 31 games, he was his dominant force. He was, A, I would argue, one of the most entertaining players in the NBA top 10 already. But does that, does hey, that mean money? Translates to, it translates to money because it translates to ticket sales, it translates to attendance. All were directly affected by whether Joel Embiid would be there. It, and to be honest, he did play a lot of home games. It also, it also transfers to uh, Trust the Pot Process t-shirts. TTP, baby. All that merch. All that merch. No, he was, he was amazing, and I get it. He only played 31 games, and I'm looking forward to his new year Well, he's entirely healthy right now. And honestly, like being able to do that in limited minutes, in, and again, that was the thing. He was on a minutes restriction, and he still was taking over mm -hmm. games. And if him doing that was... I, honestly, I'm just trying to find a, a nice way to say, like, is there a counter-argument to, yeah, he could get hurt? Well, if he gets hurt, then the money's gone. But like, then again, it's, it's not completely gone. No. They still have to waive him, and he's still no, it's he's, he's yeah. still guaranteed ninety four million dollars. If he gets injured this year, which I mean, again, it's it's possible. He, he hasn't been healthy stronger than ever. Wasn't healthy in his freshman year of Kansas. Sean's a hater. Wasn't freshman. It wasn't healthy in his twenty fourteen year. Wasn't healthy in his twenty fifteen year. Took him two years after being drafted to finally play yep. in the NBA. He was been injured for three straight years. But he much. looks like. And he, he does great. look like a completely different player no, than he was when he drafted. He when he does, was drafted, completely. He looks more fluid out there. He has a great jump shot. But one thing that I, I want to say, and you didn't have a jump shot at all coming out of Kansas. No. But one thing I want to say is, you look at. I'm going to use the NFL as an example. You look at a guy like JJ Watt. This is a freak of nature. The best, probably, defensive player in the NFL. Yeah. But two straight years, he has gone out with season-ending injuries, and it's because he's getting so big. He's so big for his body, and and bead. It doesn't matter how great he's, he is on the court. He is a liability out there because of his health. And yes, he's a freak of nature, but that doesn't mean freak of natures can stay healthy. Andre the Giant was a freak of nature, and the guy died so early on in his life. And it's a it's sad, true. tragic thing. And I know, obviously, you know, Joel Embiid isn't as big as Andre the Giant was. He's no. actually healthy. I mean, yeah. He's working out and all this stuff. He's he's moving. He's not but, like drinking beer cans like they're like apple juice no, boxes. But the thing is, is that you know these guys. They aren't built to last. They are built. They are stacked. Like so a, don't you like want a, like a him tower. Well, you can have him because if but you don't how, lock him down. How long am I actually going to have him? Because I've only seen him for 31 games in the past three years. Right, but to be fair, last year they literally kept him out of games because of their choice, because of where they want to be in the draft. But then again, I mean, can't they in, His in first some year way... was redshirted basically because of his injury. The second year, injury again, but I feel like if you had played him from his... If he had been injury-free... I don't know that I would have wanted that Joel Embiid on the floor, to be honest. The way he changed his game, the way he, sh he built up physically, like he was as skinny as like Thon Maker was coming out. I mean, that's he was he was a twig and he's completely evolved. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think if you can have the most dominant force for some of your games, what gives you the best chance to win? Joel Embiid on the court. But so if you can pay him money and guarantee that he will be on your team, I don't even care. Like the game count, obviously you want to be above 50, 60 games. I get that. But there's no guarantees in the sport. One thing, if he played, uh, if he just du if you double his games and, and he played the same amount of minutes, he would play 62 games and probably play around, um, let's see, 50, uh, 14, probably around 15,000 minutes, which is yep. under that bar. 
So he's got to play more than what doubling his expectation, what his output was last year. Yeah. And yes, he probably could have played near the end of the year last year. We all know that. He wasn't you know, totally banged up. It wasn't no. like he had a, a season-ending injury. They just wanted to be cautious with him. But if they're overcautious, they might keep him under that 1650 minutes per played. And, you know, hey, what if he doesn't, you know, keep up to where he is or maybe caps out at a 2011, whatever he was, 2011 and four player, I think he was. Um, uh, 20, yeah. uh, 20, he did that in 25 minutes a game. Yeah. Well, but then again, he put saying, up 20 I'm saying, points, if, if you're restricting his minutes, 25 minutes, if you're restricting his minutes to 25, which seems like you're you're trying to do, and he's only playing like 62 games, he might not hit that 1650 that you're looking for, and that's something that they can opt out because if he's not performing and he's only you know staying, staying around that 20, uh, 27 and, and, and two mark, yeah, you know, this is something that they can cut because he's not performing to the expectations <laughs> that they signed him to. The, the organization of the 76ers would be rioted on. Like, they would just... The, the city of Philly loves this kid. He's already... I'm not doubting that, but I'm saying if he's not playing the minutes that, you know, is stated in his contract of yeah. 1650, and he's not playing to the expectation or exceeding the expectation, because the expectation... Or plays. Is, so if he misses 25 games or plays less than... So he can, he can play 62 games or 60... Yeah, 62 games, and he's fine, even if no, he's on a minutes restriction. Wouldn't it be 63? This 82 games, math on the stream is minus hard. 25. Well, I'll look it up. But what I'm yeah. saying is it, it's it's close. It's either or. So he can have he can be on a minutes restriction as long as he plays the games. That's the thing. It's that or contract. 57 games. Yeah, so if he gives you 57 games at 25 minutes a game, you're fine. I think you take that happily. Right. Well, I'm just saying, though. But you, you look yes, at the it. contract has outs. No, they would, be, they would be idiotic to take those outs. He is... He but is what the I'm shining star is, of this team. The idea is that he's going to exceed expectations. The, oh yeah. The, 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 idea the problem is, is the expectations are off the screen. The idea right, is right that now. that was his rookie year. So now he's got to now he's got to put up 22, 10, and then you know three or something. He's got to grow. I mean, and what I'm saying <laughs> if, is if he doesn't grow yeah. and he plays less than sixteen fifty, they can cut that contract. If he doesn't, if he plays less than sixteen fifty or fifty seven games, it's an or. So he has that way in. Yeah, no, but what I'm, that's his, or so if he doesn't play, yeah. if he plays less than sixteen fifty, they can cut six, the contract. But he can play fifty eight games and he's fine. That's the thing. The or is confusing. I thought it was and. No, and it's would or. include that. It's whatever. or. It's Anyways, or. It's, it's not, killing me. It's not the con, it's not the, 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 the the discussion is if he doesn't grow, I don't think he's worth. This he's contract. not Ja. He's gonna grow. He's we don't only, know that though. I do We're know assuming. that because you watch. We're assuming. Look at his form when he was in. Ca- when he was at college, look at his form. Look at his form, look at his form now. I'm just, I'm just saying. Look at his look form at, in the preseason. I'm looking at what he did last still year. Good. Can he still grow? Oh yeah. But I, where does he where does he need to grow in his game? Is that that's the thing? Is that's what I'm trying to get to? Is we saw Joel Embiid at 24 moving. years old in his rookie year be fantastic? Yeah. And I'm not doubting that he wasn't fantastic. But then again, if he doesn't grow, and this is what you're getting, is he worth 146 million if he's not going to be ridiculously healthy and you're putting him on a minutes restriction? Yes, still is. I don't care. The number doesn't matter because contracts in the NBA are silly and it's all timing based. Like Hassan Whiteside got a near max contract because it, he just lined up in the right time. Is he worth it? Absolutely not in my mind. But he got it and he deserves it now because that's the way the NBA works. So Joel Embiid, because the stars lined up right and because he had a phenomenal stretch of games, absolutely earned this money. And they put in all these contract exclusions and ways to back out of the deal. But I honestly don't expect them to be needed. I think that he will be able to be, go out there, be healthy. He's built up his body. He's trained hard every season. Like, it, it's entirely based around him being a constantly healthy player. I know it's not easy to sustain at his frame and his stature, and especially his play style, mm. but every cent of that is worth it if you get Joel Embiid out there in your games because he gives you the highest chance to win a game. And disclosure. I'm rooting for Joel Embiid. I hope he plays. He's just playing devil's I, I advocate right that. now. He's yeah. getting really I'm, mad. I'm trying to play devil's advocate. I don't think he's going to regress. I don't think he's going to stay stagnant. I think he's going to grow. Because you look at what he's been doing with the preseason with Markel Fultz and Ben Simmons. He's acting like a fucking point guard out there, and he's seven feet tall. He's I mean, he taking their insane. foul shots. Like, yeah. He's out there take, like, oh, flagrant one. Uh, we're we're going to send Joel Embiid to the line. And what, he was like 13, 13 or 14, yeah. I think, one of the, one of his preseason games? Yeah, he's, he's just... He, he's a dominant force, and I don't know anywhere. And he got Hassan Whiteside to commit three fouls within two and a half minutes. My biggest thing, though, is, is just that frame. Because, again, freak of natures do not hold up. Dwight I, Howard was similar. Dwight Howard has not hold, held up. Dwight Howard is I not know, the but same he didn't player break he was down. when he was great. Yeah, but now he's 30 or 31. Like, That's the thing, though, is when Joel comes out of this contract, he's going to be 28. 
Yeah, that's still prime. But what I'm, that's still prime, Dwight baby. Dwight was in his prime when he started regressing. Dwight also was unhappy. I but, think that's the difference. But, like, if you keep players happy, they want to work, and they will work. He, Joel Embiid has the work ethic of someone who wants to do this. But Dwight they, Howard did what, not. What I'm saying, though, is the work ethic, if yep. he overworks himself, he can put himself in a dangerous situation. Again, he's worth the contract. If if this all pans out, he plays those minutes, he's going to be worth a max contract. Say so he could put want, up like 30, 15, you, and 7. Even if he stays at where he was. If he stays yeah. at where he was, he was ridiculously valuable to the 76ers. And nobody's doubting that. And I'm not trying to make you doubt that. What I'm just saying, though, is just trying to play devil's advocate of freak of nature's do not hold up. And you don't want him going against you. If you're the 76ers, you don't want him on a different team. Pay him the damn max. I'm just worried about him long term. Because... Joel Embiid was fun to watch last year. For those 31 games, it was insane watching the 76ers run, but I am just nervous that this will not hold up. And when he gets to year four, year five of that contract, I don't know if Joel Embiid is playing on the court. And it really doesn't matter because the 76ers aren't tied contract-wise. J.J. Redick's contract, gone after this year. I forget the other bum they signed, but it's gone after the year. Who do they sign? Um, I'm trying to think of his name because he's, he's not even that valuable to this team. They signed him for like $13 million. Oh, uh, I don't even know who you're talking Former about. Former center. Yep, for some team. Cam totally blank on his name. It doesn't matter though, because sure. he's gonna play like you know ten minutes. All of those contracts, 18, 13 million. They have flexibility in rookie off. contracts out of the yeah. And then they're gonna have rookie contracts, Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz, uh Dario still Dario, is on a pseudo contract. Uh, TLC. Yeah. Yep. I mean these and Rocco is is fairly Rocco cheap. Rocco's getting his money though. Yeah, and, but, but then again, I don't know if he's really gonna get a max. We're looking at Rocco, probably yeah, not gonna yeah, get a max. Probably not a max. Gonna but, get close, yeah. but not gonna get a max. So yeah. then again, you have the money to blow on Joel and yeah, what else is he gonna do with that money? Come on. I mean, other than sign two max players. And, and probably take Rihanna out on a date. Well, definitely that. Oh, I thought you said the 76ers. I thought you meant <laughs> what is Joel and gonna do with this money? Uh final thing. How have you looked and, and seen Joel and Bead in the preseason? I mean, have you seen any improvements in this game or is it same cookie cutter thing, even though that cookie cutter is fantastic. Honestly, it's been a lot of the same. I think a lot of it is how does he fit in next to Ben Simmons and uh, on the court because their offense was very different last year because in the games that he was in, Amir Johnson. Sorry, Amir buddy. Johnson. Big fan of the show. Uh, he got signed by 13 million. Totally forgot about uh, him. He's not I'm playing sorry. though. It doesn't matter. He probably won't see the court. Yeah, honestly, it's gonna be a very different uh, way they're gonna stretch out the floor because Ben Simmons is now running point basically for them. They're going to have to have, obviously, because you have your seven-footer stand behind the three-point line, because if teams don't respect it, he will make those shots. Like, who the fuck does that? Who does this shit? The one thing that was crazy was seeing Ben Simmons in the post and Joel Embiid behind the three-point line and just toss, like, a nice little dime. It was like a Steve Nash pass. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was perfectly placed inside. It's going to be fun to watch. Again, I think... they got to learn the, the, the roster. they got to learn how to play through Ben Simmons. And, also, uh, what the fuck yeah. is Mark Fultz doing with the shot? Uh, it looks bad. He's got that weird hitch. Apparently he's got like, a bad shoulder. He's releasing it out like up here. I don't know what Markel Fultz is doing. He broke a shot. Hopefully he fixes it. Um, but still looking at it, I think people should reel back their you know expectations a little bit. Still think 76ers have the talent to be a playoff team. Definitely not saying they don't. But, you know, <laughs> Which is again, just silly. I trust the process. I don't know how far they're going to go in the playoffs, but I still feel like they're in playoffs. TTP, baby. Anyways, that's going to do it for the Fast Break Podcast. Check out tomorrow, if you're watching on YouTube, we got the Fast Break Overtime coming at you. We're going to talk Joel Embiid versus Carl Anthony Towns. We're going to debate who would you rather have on your franchise and as your key piece for the you know for the next five years, pretty much, since yeah. Joel Embiid signed a max contract for five years. But anyways, don't forget to check out patreon.com slash podcast. Next week, we're having Jake on the podcast on Ooh. the fast break for a topic. It should be a fun time. So if you want to be a part of that, go check out the $10 option at patreon.com slash podcast. But for Dave Oster, I'm Sean Anderson. We'll see you next time.